So what is PET scanning? Well, first of all, it's, it stands for positron emission tomography. So it's going to be giving you a picture, basically, of um, radioactive decay <laughs> so in specific places in the brain. So um, basically, the procedure is um, uh, a radio-labeled compound has to be injected or inhaled, um, and it travels into the brain. Um, and it decays pretty rapidly. So as it decays, a positron is released, and it can move a short distance and encounter an electron, its antimatter equivalent. And then they annihilate each other, and they generate these gamma rays that, that shoot out in opposite directions. And those arrival events can be detected by a, um, like a series of detectors you know, that surround the head. And it can, you know, with that data, you can extrapolate back to where the decay event actually occurred. So if you inject something radio labeled into the blood, for example, and it's traveling within the blood, if an area becomes more active, you know, more um, synaptic, you know, uh, activity, well, you know, those astrocytes that surround the synaptic gaps will actually also detect that enhanced activity and they will provoke the release, or sorry, the, uh, the, the expansion, the dilation of capillaries in the area. So you'll get more blood flow, you know, that follows on <clears throat> areas of increased activity in the brain. Um, and you'll get more decay events then occurring. So you'll see an increased signal, a radioactive signal, a gamma ray kind of signal um, from that specific area of the brain. So PET tells you about areas that are active or engaged, but that activity refers specifically to the measurement of blood flow changes. Um, PET is also very powerful, though, because um, you can radio label many different you know, types of compounds, including, for example, glucose. So you could actually um, utilize PET as a measure of metabolic activity, sort of like a metabolic tracer. Um, you could also radio label, for example, agonists or antagonists. Um, let's say to a dopamine receptor, let's say you have a weak antagonist to a dopamine receptor and you see a signal coming from a region. But if somebody is actually um, engaged in dopamine release, if something is motivating <clears throat> and provoking release of dopamine, it'll displace you know, that uh, weak antagonist, that radio labeled antagonist, and you'll see a drop in the signal. So you can um, utilize PET you know, for a number of you know, interesting uh, research studies. Um, <clears throat> the thing about PET, though, of course, is that it um, it requires like a small nuclear reactor, kind of close by, so you can generate, you know, all the radio labeled materials. Um, and you know that's not a cheap technique um, to basically have, you know, a, a radio a, 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 a nuclear reactor nearby, and and also the experts that are necessary that are needed to actually, you know, uh, make it run effectively.